Welcome. My name is Robert Panis, and I'm an engineer at Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory. I'd like to talk to you today about a new technology, the Light Field Directing Array, or LDA for short. This technology grew out of a need to control the light emitted in all directions from a surface, otherwise known as the light field, and do so all at high speeds and fine precision. This kind of performance enables advanced applications in both sensing and image projection, such as high-speed focusable LIDAR, new manufacturing capabilities, and 3D image projection. And we'll cover these later in the presentation. Our solution to the problem came in the form of a micro-mirror array, which we call the LDA. So what is this? This is a repeating pattern of micro-scale mechanical devices, each of which controls a small mirror. Together, these act like a single large mirror with the benefit of fast and fine motion control. So the chip that we're building at present for the prototype is shown in the upper right-hand corner. It has a small array on it. This is the array that we're using to demonstrate the LDA. We can pull the mechanical structure of the LDA out from the chip so it can be seen more clearly. The single element in the chip is highlighted here, and we can pull that out so we can just see that, that single core repeated element that forms the whole LDA array. This is the key to the LDA, and the performance for this device is listed on the left-hand side. This is significantly in excess of anything on the market. These elements are capable of tip, tilt, and piston motions. That allows us to point the light in any, in any desired direction, as well as control the phase of the light exiting the array to maintain high-quality beams. The mirrors are independently controlled, so we can adjust the focal distance of the array. We have a very high fill factor, 99% here, so that we're able to handle high intensity beams without damaging the array below. The structure of each element is such that they're arrayable over large areas. We envision this being operated upwards of 10,000 element arrays over about 10 by 10 centimeter surfaces. Finally, each element is capable of moving over large mechanical ranges, upwards of 80 degrees optical range, or being designed for very fast speeds, about 100 kilohertz of fine motion bandwidth. This technology excels at controlling and directing light. Here I want to show you the prototype status. The images from the present effort are shown on the right hand side. The fabrication is an ongoing process with each component being fabricated separately. This phase is nearly complete. We expect to be done at the end of 2013. We're using a combination of standard microfabrication techniques to build the lower part of the device as well as additive manufacturing techniques to build the upper part. We're beginning the assembly phase uh, in, through 2014, and we expect to have an array demonstration in approximately one to two years. So our technology fills the gap in the landscape of existing micromirror designs. The chart shown in the right-hand side allows us to make this comparison with speed on the vertical axis and the mechanical range in the mirror on the horizontal axis. Only devices which meet the requirements listed on the left are shown on this chart in comparison. So we're looking for performance in the top right-hand part of the chart. This is where we get both high speeds and large ranges of motion in order to enable these advanced applications. Many devices exist for directing light, but each is designed for a specific purpose. Full light field control places significant demands on the device. So let's look at these demands. First, we need analog control over each axis so that we can access the full range of motion of the device. Secondly, we need multiple degrees of freedom to point in all directions, as well as piston motion to control the phase of the light so we can maintain the quality of the beam. Finally, we need a large area array with high fill factor so we can handle high intensity beams without damaging the micromirror array. When we apply all of these limits, we can see that existing devices don't extend into that upper right hand corner. We want to be up there because that combination of speed and range enables a wide range of advanced applications, and I'll talk about those briefly uh, in a few more slides here. The LDA technology is able to reach into this area because of the unique and patented features that we've incorporated into the design. A range of features are brought together to make this design capable of fast and large range motion. We can see the device shown on the left with an exploded view in the center and the elements labeled in it. Finally, we can see the uh, motion, the single axis motion of the paddle shown in an animation in the bottom left. The competitive advantages of this design are shown in the bottom right. 
The LDA generates motion to the single axis tipping of each of the paddles, driven by combs underneath, underneath each panel. This rotary motion drives the mirror hexapods, hexapod flexures, up and down, which forces the mirror to tip or tilt, or if all are driven together, to do piston, linear motion up and down. This design uh, is, is enabled by five unique features that are specific to this design and they give us these competitive advantages shown in the bottom right. Faster, more accurate motion, and larger range than existing devices. This can also be patterned over a larger area than competitive other designs. And finally, we can integrate both light sources as well as sensors into this device so that we can act to both direct the light as well as control and generate it on a single flat thin chip. This allows us to do things like the 3D image projection that we'll be talking about shortly. The LDA technology enables a wide range of advanced applications, as I've spoken of earlier. A partial list of these is shown on the left-hand side. This technology gives us unprecedented control over light emission, including the direction, the phase, the focal point, and the intensity of the light coming out of a full surface for the integrated source designs. All of this, again, over large areas at high speeds and fine accuracy. This is intended to enable new applications as compared to simply cost competing with existing mirrors. So examples of some of these applications are video rate confocal microscopy, where the mirrors are, use, are used in a microscope to scan over small objects like cells and MEMS devices to produce 3D images. The speed of our array enables this to be done at video rates so we can watch motions and changes occur. Additionally, the high speed and controllable nature of the array allows us to use this for focusable LIDAR, which is where lasers are used for a ranging process to map a surface. Uh, the mirror can be split. The array can be split to send out beams in different directions to map large areas in parallel or focused in on an object of interest to finally dither over it, something like a person, a vehicle, or a building, in order to obtain a finer mapping of one particular area. This is not possible with existing devices which use oscillatory or rotary mirrors that can't be focused in on objects of interest. The ability to control the light field emanating from the array allows us to send out different images in different directions so we can achieve glasses-free, multi-axis 3D image projection. This is an excess of devices that are found in the market presently for 3D image projection. The high bandwidth of the mirror array, as well as its uh, high accuracy, allows us to do image stabilization for things like tracking moving targets or maintaining laser communications between moving vehicles. Finally, the large area of the array, combined with its high fill factor, makes it possible for us to direct high energy beams without damaging the array. This enables a wide range of new applications in both power transfer, advanced manufacturing for things like additive manufacturing, 3D printing, or a whole range of new laser uh, manufacturing technologies, or even defense applications. Thank you for listening to the presentation. If you're interested in this technology, please contact Charity Follett at the Industrial Partnerships Office. Thank you.